Okay, today I want to talk about how you can create an animated underline effect. Just as an example, here we have what we're going to build today. As you mouse over, or as you tab to these different elements, you see the underline appear slowly, and then as you mouse off, the underline goes away, and it travels all the way across. It's like it's entering one side and leaving the other. So we're going to talk about how to create this effect. I have in my code here a very simple menu, an unordered list with a bunch of list items. Inside each list item is the anchor tag itself. Now the anchor tag, this is where we're going to be creating the underline. So we have the text, we're going to style that with one color, and then the underline is not going to be the actual text decoration property. We're not using that property. What we're going to do is we're going to use the after pseudo element. So you can see here the class menu link, those are my anchors. And we've got a style for that, it's going to give us the text color, and then menu link after is going to add some brand new content. We're not actually going to put any text or anything, we're just going to create this line which is two pixels tall, or whatever thickness you want. When we mouse over here, this underline, this is actually the after element being created inside the anchor tag. We use position relative on the anchor tag, position absolute on the after element, and then we give it a background color. That's what this is right here. It's just a background color being added to an element. And we're going to scale it up and scale it down. So we're going to scale it up from the left hand side sliding across. When we leave, we scale it down. So its default is going to be over here on the right hand side with a width of zero. When I mouse over, I immediately change where this thing is. I put it over on this side and then I increase its scale to fill up the entire width. So that's what we're doing in this animation. So let's look at the actual CSS. Inside my menu link, that's the anchor tag, I'm using a color for the text, and then I'm going to use the same color as the background for the after pseudo element right here. So if you want the two colors to look like they're matching, if you want it to look like it's the actual text decoration property, keep these two colors the same. It doesn't have to be goldenrod, just make the two colors the same. If you want it to be something else, go ahead, change it. Positioning. We're using position relative on the parent element, position absolute on the after element. And that means wherever the link goes, the after element is going to follow it along, and we can use bottom, left, top, and right to position exactly where we want it inside of the parent container, which is the anchor tag. Now, um, the padding, I'm putting zero on the bottom because I don't want to create any extra space between the text and the underline. So if I came in here and I added one REM of padding to the bottom of each anchor tag, when I come back in here, you can see there's this gap. I don't want that gap. I want this underline to be right up against the text or almost touching the text. So that's why we go to zero for the padding. Now that this, now this underline is going to be right there, almost touching it. Okay, now the animation part of it. Transform origin. This is a very important part. So the default for this thing, it's going to be at the bottom and at the right edge of the parent element, the anchor tag. So this after element that has no content whatsoever is going to be positioned in the bottom right hand corner of the after element. And it's going to be scaled to 0%. These two properties right here, that's sort of the ending state, or when I'm not moused over, right in the bottom corner, right in the bottom corner, bottom right corner, bottom right corner, bottom right corner, that's where it is. When I take my mouse off, you can see that's where it's going back to. It's shrinking down to that size right there, the scale zero. So it's it's stretching and compressing, but it's compressing to the right hand side. When I hover over or when I tab to one of the links, that's when we're getting this. And this is an important thing to note here. Hover and active have to come before after. If you put the after before this, it's not going to work. So make sure you're putting hover and active first. When I hover over, I want it to expand to fill the entire thing. But the transform origin, where does the animation or the scaling start from? It's going to be the left bottom. 
So it's going to be starting from the left hand side and expanding out. There we go, expanding from the left hand side. You want to switch a couple of these up? You can do that. You can do different ones. So I can say that I'm going to look at the menu link after down here. Let's change a couple of these. So I'm going to change the default, but I have to select one of them. I can use nth child or nth child of type to choose one of them, but it's going to break with the after. So we will come up here and say nth, nth of type number two. This is going to be the second list item, which will give us number one, number two, this long link. That's the second list item and inside of that, the menu link after. That's how we have to target these things. And then for the other style, nth of type, number two, menu link, and we're gonna say hover colon after. We have to put the hover first. And we should also put the, uh, the active class on there. So we'll just add that quickly. And change that to a comma, there we go. So now I'm targeting this second one. I'm gonna make it different than all the other ones. And I'm just gonna change a couple of properties. I'm going to change my background color. So by default, instead of goldenrod, let's, uh, let's go with magenta. So I'm gonna have a different background color and I'm gonna switch where the positioning is gonna happen or where the, uh, the start of the animation is gonna take place. Instead of it going from the right to the left, we're gonna make it go from the left to the right. So we're, just, we're really just flipping these two properties. And then one other property that we need to look at is the fact that we're saying we're looking at the left-hand side. I'm gonna change this to be the right-hand side and start from there. So we're gonna come into, this is menu link after without the hover. So inside here, left, we're gonna to change to be auto and the right is gonna be the zero property. Okay, and there we go. So we've got animations happening in different directions. And you can play with this. You can change the size of the underline. You can change the direction that it's going. You can make something flow from the top to the bottom or on an angle. Just by playing around with these different positioning properties and the transform origin. That's really the key to this whole thing. All right, so I hope that helps you out. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below. And as always, thanks for watching.